Glory to God. Thank the Lord. All right, as we continue and move toward a conclusion of our series in the book of Ephesians, we now arrive at verse 13. And I've entitled this part of the series as we move toward its conclusion, Dressed for Battle. Dressed for Battle. Verse 13 of Ephesians chapter 6. Paul says, Therefore, put on the whole armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. It opens with the word therefore. You know when you see the word therefore, you're supposed to stop and make sure you know what it's there for. And it's there because Paul has just taught us that it is important that we understand that we're in a fight. The last previous message, we made it crystal clear that we are in warfare. Being saved is not a party. Being saved, there are times you party in the Lord, rejoice in the Lord, but you can never forget you are a warrior and you are in the midst of an active war. Spirituality is a warfare. And therefore, he is making sure we understand we got to be dressed for battle. So he said, and notice he said, put on the full armor of God. The inference is clear. If you want to be successful in the warfare against your soul, you can't just put on a few little items. You got to put on the full armor of God. And you have to make sure you are perfectly equipped to fight and to fight well. So now what I want to do is make sure you understand what this is about. Christians are good for, oh, God said put on the whole armor. Well, what is it? I don't know, but I'm supposed to put it on. <laughs> well, you know me. I'm a teacher in the body of Christ. He made some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. I have a gift mix of pastor, teacher. And as a pastor, I lead and feed the people. And as a teacher, I don't just feed them uh, stuff that they already know. That's good. To, you know, all of us have our favorite meals and all of us have our favorite messages. Oh, I love when a preacher preaches from that passage. That's good. Nothing wrong with you having some favorite scriptures. But you need to eat a, a diet that you can grow to. So this, uh, so I can't preach today. I can't hoop. I'm not going to hold my ear and go in the E flat. <laughs> it's not going to help you. What I have to do today is make sure you begin to understand what the armor is, what Paul is saying to us. And so I want to, you know, my job is to do permanent damage to ignorance yes. and to make sure people don't sit under this ministry and, and not know what they need to know in order to win in warfare. And so he says, put on the full armor of God. First thing I want you to understand is that you can't be a casual soldier and be victorious. When they tell you to dress for battle, you got to dress right for battle. You can't just put on a few little things and say, I'll be all right. Run out, run out there and grab a gun and, and think you're going to do something. No, no, put on the full armor. We got to be ready to go. God calls us to completeness in our preparation. Yes. I, I, I thought about the fact that in Joshua chapter 1, remember after Moses, the Lord began to speak to Joshua in, in chapter 1 verse 2. And he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Yes. Now then, you and all these people Get ready. That's what some of you need to do right now. Get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them. Now skip down to verse 7 and you'll hear the Lord saying to Joshua uh, in verse 7, Be strong and very courageous. And then watch this. Be careful to obey some of the law. 
You know, you don't have to take it that seriously, but obey a few things that you don't mind God doing. No, no. He said, Joshua, I'm getting ready to give you an inheritance that's going to blow your mind, but you're not going to have a cakewalk into Canaan. And the only way you will be successful because the folk in Canaan know you coming and they are ready to stand. They are ready to come against you. So if you are going to take over what I'm giving you, you're going to have to fight for it. And in order to be equipped, he said, you have to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Then he said, do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Saints, we need to understand Jesus won the victory. Victory is ours. But that doesn't mean the enemy is going to let you enjoy it unless you fight for it. In other words, he can't do anything about your eternal soul. You're saved. And he can't unsave you. I hope you understand that, that I'm saved and there's nothing the devil can do about that. He wishes I weren't, but he can't help it. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven and I'm planning to take other folk with me. But as for the enemy, he says, well, I can't I can't interfere with your eternal destiny. You're going to heaven, but I sure want to give you a miserable ride on your way. That's what the devil's trying to do in your life. He want to make sure you have as much misery as possible. He wants some of y'all to go to heaven as backslidden people. You just gave up. You just, he just wore you down. So if you are going to be the person God's called you to be, you're going to have to be prepared. How do you prepare? He said, put on the full armor of God. So that you're ready. And Joshua was told to obey, tell the people to obey everything God said. Don't leave anything out. Now, I want you to understand uh, then that um, this statement by Paul, how as he begins to describe what the armor is, he is looking at the Roman soldiers of his day. He's thinking as he's writing Uh, Because he's seen plenty of Roman soldiers. He has been in jail because they put him in jail. And and he is ultimately going to lose his life from jail. 2 Timothy chapter 4 are the last words we have from the Apostle Paul. But uh, so he's seen plenty of soldiers and, uh, and all of that. And he's picturing a soldier as he writes this letter to the church at Ephesus And he begins to describe what that soldier has on literally. And he's going to tell us what the what the what it means spiritually, how we need to be prepared. So let's look at what he says as we go through this. I'll go as far as I can go here and pick it up the next time I preach. Now, before I get into this, I was thinking as I was writing this part of the uh, of the series, I thought about. One of, the, one of the courses that we sang in those, I, I used to p- play uh, organ at a lot of churches outside of my home church, um, and, and some of those were churches. See, we, we, my church was rather sophisticated. We, you know, we had a certain order of service, and it was a hymn singing church, but we also introduced courses and gospel songs and all that. But, but the services started with a, with, with a definite person being the service present, presider. Well, I played organ at a lot of churches where services started by folk jumping up singing. Some of y'all been at some of those. They called it devotional service. Come on, if you've ever been to a devotional service. And so, and so somebody stands up and starts singing one of their favorite courses. And, they, and, you know, some of them were, were slow tempo, but still beautiful courses. I'm thinking from my childhood and, and teens, uh, I, I love song courses like He's Sweet I Know. Do I have any old folk? No, He's Sweet I Know. Storm clouds may rise, strong winds may blow, but I'll tell the world wherever I go that I have found a saint. Look at y'all knowing church stuff. And He's Sweet I Know. And then somebody else would jump up and say, his name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty king, master of everything. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. And they just would sing those kinds of songs. But then some of the folk got up singing an up-tempo song. And one of the favorite up-tempo songs was, living he loved me. 
Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified, freed me forever. Now, that was a hymn that the, that, that the Pentecostal churches didn't know because they didn't sing out the hymn book. But we knew from him, from him singing churches that the words were uh, um, uh, ju- rising, he justified, and the hymn book said freely. He justified me freely forever. That's not how we did it in the black church. No, freely nothing. Rising, he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming back, glorious day. Y'all get ready to take the service now. Stop it, I got to finish this message. But there was another up-tempo song that I thought about as I was writing this part of the series. And that one's called, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Some of y'all can see the saints getting up right now. The tambourine beaters grab, grab their tambourine. I'm a soldier. See, no, no, stop it. Now see, see y'all getting ready to go right now. And them little, them, you know, them little court, them, them uh, verses will get to them. They say, I believe I'll die in the army of the Lord. If I die, let me die in the army. One of the next courses, one, one of the next verses in that I'm a soldier, they said, got my war clothes on in the army of the Lord. Got my war clothes on in the army. Got my sword and shield in the army of the Lord. All right, I, I can't mess with y'all like that because y'all <laughs> mess around, take my service. Let me tell you something. I need to make sure you know what those war clothes are because it's fun to sing, but you need to know what the war clothes are. That's why Paul wrote it. He said, you got to put on the full armor. Okay, Paul, we're ready to do that. What what are war clothes? Well, first of all, he's going to describe what the soldier has on when he's in active duty because soldiers, when they're in their civilian Uh, mode, they can just put on the stuff from their closet. When they're on R&R, whatever, they don't have to wear a uniform. This is my time. But as soon as you get back into active duty, you're supposed to put certain things on. Now, you know, soldiers, sometimes you see them in their formal dress. Have you ever seen them in a parade or at a dinner or something like that? And a lot of soldiers, you know, everybody else has on their formal wear and stuff. And I've, I've been to dinners where the soldiers come in with their dress uh, uniform as a soldier. Look sharp, real crisp, because they don't play wrinkles and stuff. <laughs> 